Apparently, the, the tech guys are telling you we're live. So, welcome back. Um, I'm not Axel, uh, <laughs> pointing out the obvious. Um, uh, it's me, David, uh, being back again uh, here in the live stream of uh, Champion 2020. Um, it's uh, getting rather dark right now here in, uh, all, uh, in sunny Cologne, not so sunny anymore. Um, uh, I think the uh, just uh, the, the Dragon Lounge that happened like 20 minutes ago is supposed to fly right over my office uh, in 12 minutes. Uh, so uh, don't be too distracted if I'm going to be distracted. Um, the launch was a success, uh, just in case if you're wondering. Um, so you can stop watching that stream right now and start watching our stream, um, just in case. Um, so. Um, JEP 2020 is a special online version this year um, because the in-person event couldn't happen uh, for obvious corona-related reasons. Um, and uh, because it couldn't happen, uh, the JEP Association has a rather big uh, cancellation fee to be paid. Uh, so uh, before we start with the actual maintainers chat, if you have a couple of minutes and a couple of bucks lying around, feel free to sign up uh, to, to hit uh, jankbeyond.org, uh, hit the uh, donate button uh, and leave us a couple of bucks uh, for the uh, association's bank account. That would be extremely helpful. Um, if you have uh, anything that you would like to tweet, to share, to Facebook, to Pinterest, is anyone using still Pinterest nowadays? Probably not. Um, but if you're doing so, please use the JEP20. Can one use hashtags at Pinterest? I never use hashtags, to be honest. Uh, Pinterest, well. Um, just use the JEP20 hashtag, long story short. And um, now I would say we're getting uh, right into a session where I have uh, a bunch of lovely colleagues from the CMS maintenance team. Um, may I suggest that we do a quick introduction just for the audience to get uh, people to know? Um, Harald, you start. Um, yeah, hi. My name is Harald Latner. I am a current release lead for Joomla Stable 3.9. Um, I'm doing, doing Joomla since Mambo, actually, and yeah, that's me. Okay, where are you located? What's your time zone? Uh, Austria, yeah, and um, <laughs> Central European time. Summer. <laughs> Summer time. Yeah. That that that's a way longer than it should. Yeah, finding out where you are. Okay, Richard, you have to unmute yourself. That would help. Yeah, of course, I forget about that. Yeah, I'm Richard from Germany, and I'm member of the Joomla box bug squad and of the maintenance team uh, there was just recently in the current uh, 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 Joomla magazine uh, was was uh, something about me so if you want to know more just read it there <laughs> saving us some time very good very efficient George uh, hi I'm George um, I'm from London I've been doing this too long now. Uh, I've been doing Joomla maintenance for like, I don't know, five years now. I've uh, been involved in the community since 2013, so I'm a spring chicken compared to all these guys in the Mambo days. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm the J4 release lead. You probably said that too. Yeah, and I'm David. I'm one of the moderators of this event, and I'm also part of the CMS maintenance team, um, mainly because Harald assigned me permissions for that. Uh, so I can merge stuff so he doesn't have to. Um, and um, my, the, the role where I'm probably more involved in CMS development is uh, um, that I'm the uh, CMS security lead thingy. So uh, if you see me running, um, then uh, security-wise probably shit his uh, head to fan. So um, purpose of this uh, session is uh, to give you guys, the audience, the chance to ask uh, whatever question pops into your mind uh, regarding the CMS, its future development roadmap. Um, and uh, as you guys uh, haven't asked that much question so far, um, we just briefly discussed in the uh, break that George is going to outline um, the next couple of steps in the CMS roadmap to give you guys an idea or, or the, the draft of what might be a 
roadmap. Uh, and then we were looking forward to your questions, feedback. Um, yeah, and you can actually watch us discuss whatever you're saying. George, the stage is yours. Oh, God, panic. OK, so um, one of the things we've been doing is production um, for the last couple of months, bearing in mind, obviously, main focus has been on beta, but we're not doing our job as kind of a leadership team um, and as maintainers um, if we're not thinking about kind of what comes next after 4.0. So um, we've started to slowly spec out some features and release plans and stuff for what 4.1 and 4.2 might look like, um, how we want to release the 4 series, um, all these kinds of things that we kind of need to be thinking about. So um, 4.1, um, we're looking at kind of improving media manager um, in, or improve media manager, um, adding support for more formats and that kind of thing. You guys will see a bit more about media manager in my talk later. But basically, we're largely keeping support for the same things that we've got now, just extra features here and there, but start to kind of work more with it and continue also work on workflow. Um, I won't spoil Benjamin's talk either, but um, yeah, there's like lots of additional things we get the chance to do with, with workflows. Um, look at uh, implementing some sort of uh, poor man. Uh, there's a kind of a poor man's cron plugin uh, that's been written and kind of think about starting to merge that with the ability to um, either people can have proper cron scripts and proper cron integration into Joomla core, um, or they're basically be a system plugin, poor man's alternative. Um, Starting to work on um, potentially signed updates for Joomla extensions, which would be the first step on the way to um, auto updating Joomla. Um, and then also start to work on or continue working on any accessibility features that haven't been hit um, as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's lots of kind of things that we're thinking about. Obviously, it goes without saying, none of these things are like, um, finalized, these are all things that we're talking about and provisionally just discussing and debating about whether these things are required and all that kind of stuff. So whatever we're talking about here is more like trying to make sure that um, we're all, um, well, first of all, being open and transparent with you guys about what we're talking about and um, also trying to make sure that we have a, um, a plan that is got the buy-in of the community going forwards. Um, did everybody hear that? I see Richard typing in chat that sometimes he's losing odd words. Well, just uh, may maybe a single word, but I think one one got the idea. Cool. That was good enough. Okay, so Brian, you already asked about auto updates. Um, George very briefly mentioned it. Um, the the hard thing about auto updates is uh, doing them in a secure way and secure not necessarily um, not breaking sites that's also fine um, <laughs> but also making sure that um, a malicious auto update can't be applied um, because that's my security wise that's my my most panic scenario at all having that central uh, Joomla auto update server staying around somewhere and if that's um, get compromised uh, Nodega would be could could uh, start uh, distributing a malicious update um, in order to avoid that scenario um, we are actually uh, forming a cross CMS um, working group in the PHP community um, to implement and um, a signing framework uh, called uh, TUF, uh, the update framework um, that uh, originally has been developed by, uh, by the Python community. Um, and uh, that's probably the, the way to go for us. So uh, figuring out a way how to do it safe and then start implementing the Joomla specific stuff on top of the actual signing process. Um, uh, I wrote a draft for that, which is, I think we already shared that with in the production department, and the link will be included in the next meeting minutes, if I'm not mistaken. If not, it's going to be published 
rather soon, I hope. Um, yeah, so you can have a look how it's going to work out. Um, Time-wise, well, I hope that we'll be able to finish that signing stuff um, until Q1 next year, and then we'll have to start building the CMS-specific stuff on top. So something so sometime next year probably could work for patch releases. Um, and um, yeah, then we'll move on from there. Anything to add? No. Awesome. Um, Do you want to mention the conversations we've had with Google? Which specifically? The stuff that you and Tobias went to in America. Oh, that, that's uh, that's where that initiative is coming from. Yeah, so there, there's a, um, a cross CMS um, security summit happening once a year, uh, which is hosted by Google, and that's where that cross CMS initiative for the update framework is coming from. Uh, thank you, Google, for having us. Uh, that was really helpful. Also, it was helpful understanding that we all share that that same share uh, same challenges and that we can join forces for the uh, implementation. Um, is it planned to integrate a cookie consent function into Joomla in future? Um, I know Angie had the pull request that we discussed at some point, but I don't know what happened beyond that. I don't know if any of you guys, Harold, this is probably more on your cup of tea because we were almost talking about doing an extra release at one point. Pardon? No, I don't think I uh, do an extra lead in the no, but the the stuff that Andrew was working on for Cookie Consent. I know we decided not to in the end, but I don't know what ever happened to it after that. Mm, yeah, actually, it, uh, I've looked at it and it looks promising, but I am um, not sure if it is ready to integrate for us. But probably it would be a good idea to um, get a Cookie Consent in. Joomla core. <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the 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 hard part about that consent stuff is at least for for for. Uh, I'm I'm now speaking from the German legal perspective. Um, the um, I think there's the uh, EU privacy declaration which they are working on, which is supposed to be released hopefully next year. That's going to change that whole cookie concept thing probably again. Um, I think the German legislation, at least for cookies, isn't exactly the same or isn't isn't handled exactly the same as in other European countries. So I think it's it could be a challenge for us as a CMS to implement the cookie concept solution that works for all of us, for all countries. Um, in a legally re reliable way, um, that's probably the challenge. No? Yes? Yes, and um, actually Joomla itself doesn't need any cookie concerns because we only have session cookies. True. But yeah, still... but having the framework there to allow th third parties to amalgamate in a consistent way can't be a bad thing. Yes. Dimitri uh, just dropped the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice one, but probably not a solution. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I mean, it would for sure make sense to have the consent somewhere in our consent management, the cookie consent. For sure, you don't need the consent for the core cookies, but for any third party stuff, if someone uses Google Analysis or whatever, they always need that cookie consent. And maybe there's some interface which can be used by a plugin, third party, something like that should be done, I think. Yeah, yeah, what makes sense. And for the for the core cookie, um, I think there was a longer discussion on Twitter around the Joomla session cookie um, because uh, the, the underlying question is, do we need a session at all in all scenarios? Does a site without any forms at all no login, no contact form. Do, do we need a session? No, we don't. So why do we have a session cookie? Uh, I do know the answer to this one. And the answer is, is for plugins. So plugins have permission checks to choose what plugins run in what places. And so 
you have to basically scrap all form of access control checks throughout your site to be able to drop the session. Yeah, but actually you don't need the session for um, public access levels. Like in the API, you have a fake session. If I remember yeah, correctly. but then you have to delegate the the access checks into the plugins, which is a big BC break for plugins, which is why mm. we've not done it up until now. That's why I rejected your PR for 4.0 because yeah, no. plugins would have to do their own access checks rather than the access checks being higher up. Yeah, but it's uh, still possible for public uh, or not locked in users. Okay, so cookie cons in. Um, I, I think we, we kind of agreed that it would be Cool to have a, a, a core-based solution for this, or at least the having the APIs in place. So uh, I, as an extension developer, developing a, a Google Analytics plugin, can uh, register uh, with that core API, and whatever concept management extension on top um, can then interact with my analytics extension. So if, if you guys uh, at the screen at home think, oh yeah, that's something that I would like to work on, go ahead. So what else do we have? Image performance. Um, what's the status of the lazy loading thing for 4.0? I think that got merged today, right? Uh, yeah, so lazy loading got merged so, um from that perspective, uh, we've got lazy loading of images coming in 4.0 uh, to BSU level. So it has a plugin that backports it into Joomla 3. Um, this will be recommended by Google Lighthouse when the Joomla uh, Lighthouse specific reports come through. Uh, that is coming. Um, from the perspective of picture elements, um, I know Demetrius is working on his own plugin, uh, but there is nothing in core yet. Um, Although it's not strictly answering the question about performance, just as a side note from another uh, from another thing is we've also added in Joomla 4 an accessible image type, which basically means you can now, when you're adding images, it's effectively a small subform field that is image um, with Ali. Um, so you can add your alt text and that kind of thing. Um, and that is also something that we can use in the future to start thinking about picture elements is um, kind of a small um, subform to be able to add extra uh, image tags. Um, and that's something we can definitely think about moving forwards. However, it's not on the immediate roadmap that I'm aware of. Okay. But if, of course, if people submit the code, then we'd be more than happy to merge it. For those of you who aren't aware what uh, lazy loading means in terms of images, there's a rather modern, newish attribute for uh, image tags. Um, which is lazy load. Um, and uh, if you're using that, uh, that attribute, um, an image which is not visible in the viewport on the initial uh, side load um, will be deferred. So it's not loaded right away. Um, it's not having any impact on the page loading time. Um, and it's going to be fetched by the browser automatically once, it been, once it's been scrolled into the viewport. Um, and the beauty of that, it's, it's native browser. Um, we don't have to do any fancy JavaScript magic to support it. Um, Google is pushing that one uh, rather massively um, because of its uh, performance improvements. Um, yeah, and all major browsers now support it. Any plan in future to make Bootstrap required version more flexible so we don't get stuck with old versions? Um, okay, I can answer this. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, and the reason for that is, is it's pretty hard to make it dynamic without basically writing your own CSS framework, um, at which point there's no point in using Bootstrap at all. Um, we obviously will uh, continue to give people the override, uh, override all their code. Uh, in J4, I think we've pretty much reached the point where all um, fields, HTMLs, are now overridable, which um, was one of the biggest problems we had in Joomla 3. So I think at this point, we pretty much got to a point where everything is now overridable. Um, and so it's basically just down to it sucks. Uh, for example, we know J4 is coming, but we also know Bootstrap 5 is coming. Um, 
but there's no easy way of um, making of decoupling this. Um, we delegated as much to the template as we physically can. The only way to do things would be something like actually removing all the default views out of Joomla core output and shoving them into a template and making templates have to create a view for every single view that Joomla provides, uh, out, HTML output for every view that Joomla provides. That's the only way that you can fully decouple it. Um, yeah. I mean, at, at, at the end of the day, that that issue isn't isn't really much connected to to bootstrap or to the to the css framework that we use it's it's a general issue with dependencies where we're having the same issue with with jquery we're having the same issues with uh with composer dependencies that we're using a cms life cycle is is a rather long and massive thing um and uh, most of the upstream dependencies that we're using uh, their life cycle is a lot shorter um we're not feeling that issue too hard so far because we're running on a rather limited set of dependencies. Other CMS um, have a far more worse fight um, uh, with those issues. Uh, we During that, uh, that uh, Google thingy that George mentioned, uh, we had the chance to catch up with the Drupal guys um, and uh, their Drupal, I think composer-wise, they're having a couple of hundred dependencies um, and in the front end, even more so, and npm package wise, um, and keeping those in sync, or even running into issues with coordinated security releases in, for example, a Symphony dependency, um, is now becoming a real issue and a real challenge for all of us. Um, so far, nobody has the solution for this kind of issue. Um, before we get over there, uh, there was a question, is it possible to build in a preview button in article manager list? Um, I mean, the, the, the most straightforward way probably would be to just generate a link to that article in the front end. Um, that's straightforward um, and has some sort of a preview function. Um, the, the issue is um, if that article has a category block and a single menu item and is also used in three other places which link do you use for preview it's the 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 general issue that you have with with routing but the 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 thing itself is straightforward probably an hour or so yeah okay um can we just create some sort of class mapping library? You already answered this. That's not just class mappings. What did I do? <laughs> okay, I think that's it from the questions that we had so far. Yeah. Uh, did, did you mention uh, the the uh, the work on the image manager that's being done or the media manager in general? Do we have any long-term plans for that? Uh, nothing too specific. So I think like the next thing to do is we're going to do is we're going to start trying to support, uh, have more native support for more image formats. So things like PDFs and that kind of thing starts drag that in so there's like uh, previews for those kinds of things um i don't think there's too much of a plan like with j4 because we've added in all the hooks to do things like cloud media and image editing as plugins we're kind of leaving it down for the uh for the ecosystem to be able to um deal with some of that stuff um, because they can adapt faster than core care um Dimitris asks the question about SVGs. Um, yes. So SVGs, um, I will leave the thing about being able to upload them to David. Um, in terms of rendering, the J4 Media Manager will at least render the SVGs that are present in the folder. And I will let David talk about why we don't allow people to upload SVGs in excruciating detail. 
Oh, please, no. Um, so lo long story short, S SVG at the end of the day um, is interpreted by the browser and allows JavaScript execution. And the, the core question is, uh, are we able to filter malicious code snippets from an uploaded SVG under all circumstances? Um, and uh, the obvious answer, in my opinion, is no. Um, no matter uh, how, how much you try to to um, to filter malicious input, uh, you always run into edge cases. That's the lesson learned from the uh, HTML filter that we have for the for the editor. Um, it's a huge pain maintaining that, um, and uh, browsers uh, do weird interpretations. Um, so there, there's a risk that will remain. And the the question for us as a CMS community in general is um, if we are brave enough to take that risk and um if we're if that risk is going to be limited to super admins because only super administrator users are allowed to to uh, upload svgs or if it's acceptable for all types of users um because at the end of the day you have to have in mind that um each and every security issue found will get a cve up um, Allow only the vector part, no CSS, no JS. That's the key thing, Dimitri. S filtering that reliably under all circumstances, that's the, the hard part. That's the lesson learned from, from the HTML filter. In our HTML filter, we only allow CSS and HTML, and still we have JS injections from time to time. It's not about the theory, it's about making that work. So, long story short. Okay. More questions. Joomla allows admins to set permissions for public users totally wrong. Yeah, if you want to screw your installation, you can do that. That's true. I can also hit myself with a hammer on the head. It's not the hammer's fault. Some of the things we have been doing in recent security releases is trying to lock down some of that stuff for those. Yeah. So things like template manager and uh, the global configuration setting, you now have to be a super administrator to edit. Uh, yeah, I also agree with Phil. David, can I see this, please? <laughs> that, that, that hammer demo. <laughs> nice try, people. Nice try. Convert SVG to PNG on upload. Oh, jeez. If, if we convert an SVG to PNG, why not uploading PNG on, in the first place? Uh, David, it sounds like one for you to take a stab at. Are you willing to devote your next uh, six months of your life to trying to build such a feature? Yeah. I mean, I would, I, I would personally, I would love um, to 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 have SVG support. I'm using it all the time. That would be great. Uh, but I just fear the 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 negative publicity outcome for the CMS if we're doing back to back security releases because oh yet another issue in the SVG filter and another one another one. All those issues probably will have absolutely zero impact on real world sites, but still they all um, uh, add up on our uh, CVE count. Uh, they end up in some sort of stats, and that's just uh, the, the publicity backslash that I fear. Talking of um, back to back releases, uh, oh, yeah. releases, I thought I'd, um, it might actually be good for you to kind of talk about um, what we're doing at the moment and um, in terms of trying to reduce the number of releases that are deemed security releases because we're fixing some horrifically obscure bug and trying to delegate some of this stuff into public repos? Yeah, so the, the process so far uh, uh, when it comes to security releases was that uh, the issue itself, of course, was um, uh, was reported uh, privately to the security team. And um, within that rather small team, we were trying to, to patch those issues. And the patch itself was only shared with testers from the release team, I think 12 hours before, no, the, the final package was, 
was shared a couple of hours before the official release, but no details about the issues being fixed. And so also no test instructions were shared. And um, that resulted in a number of back-to-back -back releases where the security release broke something um, in, the, in, the, in the final release package. And uh, in order to avoid that, we're doing two things. Um, one is that um, we are now sharing closer test instructions with the release team, allowing them to, to test that more specifically. And um, the other issue, uh, the, the other thing that we are doing is that uh, for uh, we in the security team, we are trying to do the smallest possible fix for for issues. Uh, and uh, when it comes to the bigger picture, uh, doing a general fix hardening thing in the CMS or in some sort of library, uh, we move that part to the public tracker after the initial security release has happened, um, allowing people to test that on a broader base in public. That's the basic idea. Just getting enabling more testers to, to, to test security related stuff. Um, web assets is the best thing of J4. Uh, George, can you just drop a line what web assets is, just in case people sure. aren't aware? So, for those who don't know, web assets is something that uh, FedEx um, has written. Um, originally, Michael's been bubbling around the idea for a while as well. Uh, one of the things in code terms that WordPress has actually done quite a bit better than us on is dealing with um, how how to deal with dependencies in JavaScript. And probably like, although it's generally an old thing these days, is like, um, say, uh, having jQuery UI depending on jQuery and how to do those um, imports. So um, what we're trying to do is um, uh, have a more natural way of allowing JavaScript and CSS files to have dependencies. And that's so in a more modern term, you can also think in CSS, say that um, the RTL file for the Joomla core templates will depend on the main Joomla core CSS being uh, existing. Um, so like that's most of what Web Assets is about, is about trying to deal with dependencies between all our infrastructure and making sure there's a reliable way to include them um, with a more kind of up-to-date syntax uh, that makes it easier for people to understand how these dependencies work and have a lower chance of, um, if Joomla removes a JavaScript file from a page, everyone's code falling apart because they were kind of relying on it existing in the first place. Are there any plans to have greater test coverage? There's work on infrastructure, but don't see any new tests. When I submit a PR to another CMS, it requires tests, uh, unit or selenium tests. Um, yeah, that's a good question, Brian. Okay, so I can answer some of this. So um, in Joomla 4, um, things are reasonably bad at the moment. Um, and the reason for this is is twofold. First of all, this is that early on we took tests out into a standalone repo then regretted that process and moved them back again, but didn't move all of them back again. But the other reason is, is that originally we had deleted a lot of the tests in the first place because a lot of the tests were for the standalone packages that are now part of the framework. So now that we've simplified packages into the framework, we deleted the duplicate code in the CMS. And as a result, there was no need to have test coverage, like the duplicate test coverage anyway. Uh, so like half the tests died naturally to the framework um yes a lot of the plan now for dealing with um dealing with beta is um going to be improving our test coverage both selenium wise and unit test wise um like things like this and documentation are like going to be much higher priority topics going forwards as opposed to the code itself because the code itself largely becomes bug fixes Whereas the the, te uh, the testing and stuff is about trying to make sure that we have as much stability as possible. Um, in terms of Selenium tests, there's options on the table in terms of how we want to deal with that. One of the things we've been talking about is because people are 
uh, having to wait a long time for tests to pass. And um, in Drone, we've got stability problems anyway with uh, the Chrome and the Chrome Web Driver is basically having two sets of tests have like an initial set of tests, which would be kind of a similar length uh, runtime to what we have at the moment. And then like a longer set that run on release time. Um, and we just accept that, you know, these tests, I mean, back in the original days when I was starting to contribute the tests, the, the browser tests that were in raw Selenium used to take like nearly 24 hours to run on my personal laptop. Um, have something like that that runs at release time and okay, it can delay a release and we accept that. And we have to find a balance between what goes in our initial test set and what goes in our final test set. Um, it's not, it obviously would be ideal to run everything at once, but we also have to be aware that there are time issues in terms of how long people are willing to wait to get response times on pull requests. Um, what, what, what are your thoughts on, um on adding those, uh, on, on adding tests and also documentation as a hard requirement for pull requests? Um, I think uh, generally we probably will. I mean, it depends on what the pull request is. A lot of our day-to-day -day pull requests are things that are in template files, which I think we're largely unlikely to have people's ability to contribute to um, to kind of Selenium tests is relatively hard. People's ability, the people who are writing new classes to do unit tests is something that is gonna, uh, shouldn't be too hard. Like if you can write a class, you can generally write a test case to cover it. And that is something that we've been steadily trying to enforce. I'm not saying it's been iron tight, but like, I think we've done a lot better recently in terms of trying to, unit tests on new classes um i think uh, we've been struggling with selenium tests mm. um, i don't know if you feel differently uh, you're you've been a lot more to test events than i have i think the yeah so so n n not having selenium tests for features that's probably a pain point i in 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 an ideal world i would love to see some sort of bot really enforcing that uh of having some sort of at least doing some some basic testing like are there lines being added in the tests folder if not then probably no tests have been added easy um because if it's just human base um and the the individual maintainer has to decide if that pr is is complex enough to require tests um yeah, then I'll hardly see us improving coverage um, on, on a larger scale. Because let's be honest, writing tests um, sucks. <laughs> it's not the fun part of development. And writing documentation is, is even more the not fun part of development. Um, and so if it's not a hard requirement, I can hardly see us uh, improving there. But yeah. that's a personal opinion. Yeah, and some of it comes down to us too, because this production at various times in the past, we've said that we're going to make this requirement, but none of us have ever, and yeah, you know, I'm as guilty as anybody else has really said, yeah, I'm going to make it a hard requirement. I mean, there is one aspect we should not forget uh, when we require things from new contributors who make their first PR like code style and writing tests, this may be discouraging them. So we for sure have to make a difference if an experienced contributor is just too lazy to do that or if a new contributor needs somebody who helps with that. So, so, so it, 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 it's a question if we can let a bot do that or if it still needs somebody and, and I think that's us who has to do that. Yeah. to review that stuff, to help with doing the tests or at least to find somebody who can do that. Yeah, no brainer. With a new contributor, at least. Yeah. yeah. Is there planning to integrate a page builder? Um, I can answer it, I guess. So the answer is no, there are no plans to integrate a page builder. We are working on um, some kind of not a page builder, but like a alternative drag and drop style thing. So um, what we're looking at is making uh, some sort of dynamic template 
So that means that you already kind of have this kind of high level page builder. When you think about a template, you've got all these different blocks of modules that are being in different places on the page and a component area as well. And so you can easily imagine that that lends itself to a, a, a kind of drag and drop scenario. Um, and that's something that we had working on as a, uh, a GSOC project last year. And also um, there's been um, there's been people working on that since, but um, it's 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 still very much a dev work in progress, and uh, I don't think that there's any. It's not on the foreseeable horizon, and certainly not a page builder in terms of what um, Gutenberg is. It, it's kind of the opposite side of things. Like Gutenberg is like this kind of drag and drop of the actual content blocks, whereas we're more looking at kind of actual kind of your areas on the page, not like the actual content within that. We're still going to stick with Tiny for that, I think, at least for now. What's the future of the J framework? Um, the future of the J framework is basically it's going to keep going as it is. Um, so uh, the J framework is now a very integral part of Joomla 4. Um, all the application, the session, the input, the HTTP packages now all come from the framework. Um, so we're absolutely planning on keeping the framework alive and going as a standalone project. Um, at the moment, we're relatively short on um, uh, people who are willing to contribute to that. However, I'm very hopeful that with it being the backbone of Joomla 4, we're going to see more people contributing towards the, the framework repos than we have been previously, as it's kind of been more like a niche yeah. thing as an application platform. Yeah, 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 I agree. And also, I would say that, then, you know, once Joomla 4 kind of Go stable. There's absolutely nothing that stops us from working on a J uh, framework v3 in the background in parallel through J4. We can have as many major framework versions as we want before Joomla 5. We are not absolutely not wedded to having parity between framework major versions and Joomla CMS major versions. We'll still keep the framework 2 that will go into Joomla 4 supported through all that time. But you know, as the internet evolves, the framework's going to evolve at a faster pace naturally than the CMS. Any plans for a better Joomla content editor? I think you already mentioned that we're going to stick with Tiny in the foreseeable future. I briefly remember plans on switching to the current major of Tiny, which is Tiny 5, right? But I remember some licensing thingy. No, we're still we're using Tiny 5 in J4. Okay. Um, there was a browser version thing that I think means we're stuck on five point or four point something in. I can't remember what the version is, but we're stuck on something in um, Joomla three because of IE eight support. But we're we're on the latest and greatest in J four. Okay, because we finally dropped IE. IE in general. If we yeah, we IE dropped or... IE support in general. I'm although so, we're so, so much a maintainer, right? Remove that still batch, tiny, please. But we are still kind of distributing ES5 files in J4 so that people who want to build front end templates that support IE11 should have the ability to do so. Um, I'm going to go back to something higher up where someone said um, he finds Joomla documentation very hard to deal with, kind of mixed, and what are our plans to improve it in the future? Uh, that was by Valentin. Mm -hmm. um, does someone want to talk about what we're doing with docs? Okay, no one wants to talk about it. Do I have to talk about all of this? Okay, <laughs> I guess. Um, oh boy. Uh, so, in terms of docs, um, I've been putting, uh, the last month I've actually taken a bit of a step back, but for, it was about a month's period where I was kind of putting a lot of effort with the docs um, and trying to kind of delete a lot of the old 1.0 docs. The problem with docs for us is um, twofold. Um, 
probably the first pain point is that we are um, uh, we're bound to support all the old versions of Joomla. Largely, people's uh, priorities have been that we need to keep Joomla 1.5 and 2.5 docs sticking around. That means that in terms of when you're searching for results, it's very hard to prioritize. And we have namespaced all these things. So you've got, uh, if you look in URLs, a lot of these pages now have J1.5, J2.5, J3.x, and in an increasing number of cases, J4.x. Um, and in that case, um, basically, we are intending, uh, so you can see it, but trying to differentiate these things on Google is harder. Um, and also, the parent pages in the majority of cases are often the 1.5 docs because uh, we've got to keep the URLs intact for people who are linking from old forum posts and that kind of thing. And that makes life hard. Um, However, there is an intent to work on the modernization of the docs and that kind of thing. Um, the, there, uh, Brian says, uh, does anyone know of a CMS we can use to manage the content of the docs with a wink face? WordPress. Um, yes. So I'm pleased to announce today that we are going to start using WordPress as our docs. No, uh, no wait, we're not. Um, but um, no, there is a reason we don't use Joomla in all seriousness, which is, um, that we are um, basically it's it's it makes life uh, significantly harder for translators. We don't have um, a natural way for translators to um, look at paragraph by paragraph translations. We only have the concept of translating a document as a whole, and there's no way of seeing which parts of those documents are in sync, which is something that MediaWiki gives us and makes MediaWiki very powerful to us. Um, it makes the translation lives for all teams significantly easier. Um, and you can argue that that's maybe something that we need to develop for Joomla 4 um, or whatever, with Joomla version, to be honest, standalone extension or whatever. And arguably, yes, but um, it is um, not something that we have on our immediate roadmap because it just, it, it's a lot more. Uh, it would take a lot of dedication to get a, uh, a component and process ready for that. And um, it's not something that we have the intention to put uh, the time and energy of the project into right now. Um, MediaWiki as a system isn't really the problem. The problem is having multiple versions of documentations and trying to make sure that people are looking at the latest versions, um, in my opinion, anyway. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so considering the time, we have one last question, which is what about those who don't want to support IE11, so uh, ES6 support in J4? Yeah, that's the intention. Okay. The intention isn't to load ES5 for everyone. The, the intention is to do conditional loading. Okay, that was a quick one. Okay. Um, Thank you guys for taking the time. Um, and uh, before we go into the break, I think it's time to at least do a minor, uh, uh, um, a tiny little cheers or a tiny little celebration for what has just happened. A, 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 a teaser for what's going to be presented in two hours. Has anyone noticed? Yeah, probably you all have. Um, I think Joomla 4 Beta has been released right now. Well, that's right. Woohoo! <laughs> that's, that's not nearly as majestic as I would want. So, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> oh, George. Um, I think, George, you're going to, uh, to show us some more details uh, about uh, Joomla for Peter in the um, 10 p.m. UTC slot, which is in um, 70 minutes. Um, but before we jump into that, we'll have Benjamin presenting us uh, yet another Joomla 4 feature, which will be a workflow. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, re refresh yourself, uh, start downloading Joomla 4 Beta, uh, grab something uh, for the cheers part of uh, the of George's presentation, and then we'll be right back in 10 minutes. See you later, guys. And a big thank you to all of you who are contributing. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs>